another, another precious time of Bible study under the auspices of Washman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement, and I welcome you to such a time. It promises uh, to be yet another time of lifting up the plain and hidden truths of God's written word and planting the same in our heart soils for our overall good for now and for all eternity. As is usual with us, we are now going to prepare our minds for maximum benefit from the Word of God as we join our music team to sing the following hymn, The Bible Stands, Wonderful Words of Life. And then guide me, O great Jehovah, I enjoin you to join in this hymn because each and every one of, of them has uh, some particular uh, work to do in our minds before we go into the study proper. Yeah. 
Then our Father, we thank you once more for the blessing of thy word, which you have at our hands. We thank you because uh, it is a light on our path. Bless your name because uh, the Lord Jesus Christ said, we we'll continue in his word, we are the disciples of him indeed, and we will know the truth, and the truth will make us free. Thank you very much because it is on that note that we come to you at this point in time. I'm praying that every person that has tuned in may be illuminated all together so that we all be all such people that walk in the light of your word and not walk in darkness and all the consequences of darkness for now and for all eternity. Thank you very much because we know that you've answered our prayers because we made our prayers the mighty name of Jesus Christ our Lord. And I hear the people say amen everywhere. Amen. And amen. Now we want to uh, go forward to get all that the Lord would want us to get at this point in time, even through this uh, study. 
Open your Bible with me to Psalm 5. Reading from verse 1, Psalm 5. Give ear to my words. O Lord, I consider my meditation. Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King and my God. For unto thee will I pray. My voice shalt thou hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee, and will look up. For thou art not a God that had pleasure in wickedness, neither shall evil dwell with thee. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hurtest all workers of iniquity. Thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing, that is, falsehood. The Lord will abhor the bloody and deceitful man. But as for me, I will come into the house, into thy house in the multitude of thy mercy and in thy fear, Will I worship toward thy holy temple? Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness because of mine enemies. Make thy way tread before my face. For there is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward part is very wickedness. Their truth is an open sepulchre. They flatter with their tongue. Destroy thou them, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels. Cast them out in the multitude of their transgression, for they have rebelled against thee. But let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy, because thou defendest them. Let them also that love the name, thy name, be joyful in thee. For thou, Lord, wilt bless the righteous with favor, wilt thou compass him as with a shield. It is from these lines, and in particular from lines 1 to 3, that we took the issue of uh, morning and evening prayer, which we started in the previous uh, study. In other words, the issue of morning and evening devotion. Let's read verses 1 to 3 again. If ye are to my words, O Lord, consider my meditation. Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King and my God. For unto thee will I pray. My voice shalt thou hear in the morning. O Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee. And we look up. In our previous uh, study, on this issue, that is a morning and evening devotion, we highlighted the import of the routine, the routine of morning and evening devotion, as was expressed by those who went before us. We saw the psalmist's example. We also saw Daniel's example. We also saw the example of our Lord Jesus Christ. And in this uh, present study, we're going to revisit uh, the examples of uh, the ones that had gone uh, before us, even the psalmist example, and then the example of uh, Daniel and the example of our Lord Jesus Christ. But to these, uh, we will add the examples of some other people of times past. That is, including the example of the priests, the priests of old, and then Example of uh, such people that uh, were there even before the law was given, and the people that were there during the law. And then we'll now proceed to show what may be involved in the matter of uh, morning and evening devotion. We'll also show why that routine is a very uh, critical one in the life of any person that he says, I'm a child of God, I'm on my way to heaven, I'm passing through this world of uh, affliction, this world that can be considered a wilderness. And then we'll also look at the people that are not qualified to come to practice this routine. Let's go back to the examples that we saw in times past. In Psalm 5 and verses 1 to 3, if you have 
to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation, hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King and my God. Unto thee will I pray. Unto thee, O Lord, my voice shall be heard in the morning. And that we add, and also in the evening. That was uh, what the psalmist says. And then uh, in chapter 57, verse 7, he says, My heart is fixed. O God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. I work. My glory, my power, I work. Sartre, musical instrument, I work. Harp, musical instrument, I myself will awake early. I praise thee, O God, O Lord, among the people. I will sing unto thee among the nations. That was the practice of the psalmist. In verse, uh, verses 1 to 3 of Psalm 108. Psalm 108, 1 to 3. We have this record of the practice, the routine of the psalmist. Psalm 108, verse 1, O God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise even with my glory. I work sartre and harp. I myself will I work early. I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people, and I will sing praises unto thee among the nation. He said, my heart is fixed on this thing, fixed on thee, and fixed on this uh, Daily routine, routine of the morning, routine of the evening. That was the psalmist's uh, routine. And then we also showed uh, the routine of uh, the prophet Daniel. And that was uh, what happened even in the day that uh, the decree went forth, saying nobody should pray to anybody, including God Almighty. But he wouldn't listen to that. And he went in the usual routine of devotion to the Lord in the morning and then in the afternoon and then in the evening. We then went forward and saw the routine of our master Jesus Christ as he testified about in the gospel according to St. Mark. In Mark chapter 1. And uh, we are reading verses 34 and 35. Mark chapter 1 and verse 34. And he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases and cast out many devils and suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed unto God, rising up a great while before there, that was the practice of our master. Luke chapter 4, and we are reading in verse 42. Luke chapter 4 and verse 42. And when it was there, he departed and went into a solitary place, and the people sought him and came unto him and stayed him, that is, uh, made him to remain with them, that he would not depart from them. Early in the morning, he went into a solitary place to have a devotion, to have a time with the God of heaven. In this uh, present study, we are going to add the routine of the priests of old. And we are reading from Exodus 29 and verse 38. Now, this is that which thou shalt offer upon the altar two lambs of the first year, Day by day, continually. Now, it is called oblation. Morning oblation, evening oblation. Day by day. Verse 39, the one lamb thou shalt offer in the morning, and the other lamb thou shalt offer at even, that is, in the evening. Verse 40, and with the one lamb, a ten deal of flour, mingled with uh, uh, the fourth part of an hind of uh, beaten oil and the fourth part of an hind of wine for a drink offering. And the other lamb thou shalt offer at even in the evening. 
and shall do that according to the meat offering of the morning and according to the drink offering thereof. For a sweet savor, an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Sweet savor means something that has a suiting aroma. So that was what the priests were commanded in the Old Testament. In the morning, there was an offering. In the evening, there was an offering by the priests. And um, in chapter 30 of uh, uh, Exodus, verses 1 to 7, Exodus chapter 30, 1 to 7, And thou shalt make an altar to burn incense upon of sheeting wood shall thou make it. A cubit shall be the length thereof, and a cubit the breadth thereof. Four square shall it be, and two cubits shall be the height thereof. The horns thereof shall be of the same. And thou shalt overlay it with pure gold, the top thereof, and the sides thereof round about, and the horns thereof. And thou shalt make unto it a crown of gold round about. And two golden rings shalt thou make to it under the crown of it by the two corners thereof. Upon the two sides of it shalt thou make it. And they shall be for places for the staves to bear it without. And thou shalt make the staves of sheeting wood and overlay them with gold. Thou shalt put it before the veil that is by the ark of the testimony before the mercy seat that is over the testimony where I will meet with thee. And Aaron shall burn the Aaron sweet incense every morning. When he dressed the lambs, he shall burn incense upon it. Not only the sacrifice of animals, but the burning of incense unto the Lord morning and evening. That was uh, the routine of uh, daily devotion before the Lord of the priests. And then we know that uh, when Joshua was uh, made to replace Moses, and God gave him an injunction in Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1, and we are reading from verse 1. Joshua chapter 1 and from verse 1. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise and go over this Jordan, thou and all these people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of their feet shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. From the wilderness of this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea, the Mediterranean, toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee, and not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their father to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses my servant commanded thee, turn not from me to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, and thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have a good success. It is implied here that every day, every day, this man comes with that which is commanded, with the book of the law. Now the scroll, and reads it and meditates on it morning after morning, night after night, 
in order to be able to achieve what God has uh, stipulated that he was going to achieve. Although he said, I will be with you, although he gave an uh, assurance that he was going to achieve what he had been called to achieve, but there was something that the man needed to do day in, day out, and he did it. He had devotion with the Lord all the while. Now, that's about Joshua. Now, what about uh, the people that went before them? Even people like Noah, Abraham, Enoch, there were people that learned the tradition and they followed that tradition. And we see one of them that learned that tradition from their forefathers. And then he followed that, that tradition. Let's look at uh, Genesis uh, chapter 24. Let's read from verse, uh, from verse 56. And he said unto them, Hinder me not, seeing the Lord hath prospered my way. Send me a way that I may go to my master. That is uh, to, to uh, Isaac. And uh, Isaac was the son of Abraham. And then Abraham has sent his servant to go and do this business. And he was successful. And in verse 57. And they said, we will call the damsel and inquire at her mouth. And they called Rebekah and said unto her, will thou go with this man? And she said, I will go. And they sent away Rebekah, their sister, and her nurse, and Abraham's servant, and his men, and blessed Rebekah, and said unto her, Thou art our uh, sister, be thou the mother of thousands of millions, and let thy seed possess the gate of those which hurt them. And uh, verse 61, And Rebekah arose and her damsels, and they rode upon the camels, and followed the man, and the servant took Rebekah and went his way. And Isaac came from the way of the well, like high Roy, for he dwelt in the south country. Verse 63. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the eventide, a tradition that he learned from the religious fathers that he had had. The point we are taking from there is the time of meditation of Isaac. And there is... Uh, this information that we have concerning Job. Job was uh, practicing this thing. Job had this daily routine. Morning by morning, coming to the presence of God. And there is something that he said that shows uh, that that was his daily routine. Job chapter 7 from verse 1. Now, this uh, uh, chapter is a complaint of uh, Job concerning the trials, the continual trials that uh, God put upon him. And then in the process of his uh, complaint, he made a statement that shows that Job had the routine, day by day routine of uh, coming before the presence of the Lord. Job chapter 7 and from verse 1. Is that not an appointed time? to man upon earth, and not his days also like the days of an hireling. As a servant earnestly desired the shadow as an hireling, looking for the reward of his work, so am I meant to possess months of vanity, and weary some nights are appointed me. When I lie down, I say, when shall I arise, and the night be gone? And I am full of tossings to and fro unto the dawning of the day. My flesh is clothed with worms and claws of dust. My skin is broken and become loathsome. My days are swifter than a weaver shuttle and are spent without hope. And verse 8, the eye of him that hath seen me shall see me no more. Thine eyes are upon me, I am not. As a cloud is consumed and vanishes away, so he that uh, goes down to the grave shall come up no more. Now, in verse uh, 19, How long will thou not depart from me, nor let me alone till I swallow down my spittle? I have seen that what shall I do unto thee, 
O thou preserver of men, why hast thou set me as a mark against thee, so that I am a burden to myself? And why dost thou not pardon my transgression? I have assumed the sin. He had claimed he wasn't sinning, and he wasn't. But now he says, for adventure, I've been sinning. Why dost thou not pardon my transgression and take away my iniquity? For now shall I sleep in the dust, and thou shalt seek me in the morning, but I shall not be. Now, because of the practice this man had, he said, my affliction is too much, and if you take me away, there is something that you are going to miss. And that is my appointment with you every morning. You are going to miss my presence with you in the morning, even as a human being. That's the argument there. And that's why we know that this man also practiced this routine. Now you are asking, what is involved in this routine of coming to the Lord early in the morning and late in the evening? Let's see what can be involved once more from the book of Psalms in chapter 57 of Psalms verses 7 to 9. My heart is fixed. Oh God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and praise thee. It will involve praising God. It will involve the worshiping God. It will involve the reading his word. It will involve meditation. It will involve even giving glory to God with songs and with uh, musical instruments. Verse 8 says, I wake up my glory, I work, Saturday and half. I, I myself will I work with these instruments. I will come to the presence of the Lord to give him glory. In Psalm 108 and uh, verses 1 to 3, it is a repetition of what we have in Psalm 57. 108, 1 to 3. Oh God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise even with my glory. I work Saturday and harp. I myself will I work with these instruments early. I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people, and I will sing praises unto thee among the nations. This is what can be involved, the praising God and then reading the word of God as uh, uh, Joshua was told, meditating on it, and then praying to God, making intercession even for other people. Having a real great time before the Lord. That's what can be involved. And then we see also from Ephesians chapter 5, Ephesians chapter 5, and we're reading verse 18. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. It can involve singing and making melody to the Lord in our hearts. And as you are singing and making melody to the Lord in your heart, you know that God is beholding what you are doing. Who is a person that does not behold uh, some other person dancing to the pleasure of uh, himself or herself? What happened with Herod when that girl danced and uh, the dancing was so pleasing? But now you know that... Uh, God is an influenceable being. And then when you come to him early in the morning or late in the night, and uh, you come with the timbrel, you come with the samba, you come with the musical instrument, you come with uh, songs, and you come with prayers. You come with prayers of petition. You come with prayers uh, of uh, intercession. Now, God uh, will surely be influenced by such uh, uh, things that you come with. Now you ask another question, why do such routines yield great dividend? Why do such routines yield great dividend? You know what? Early in the morning, before business begins, before every other thing begins, and somebody comes before the Lord, listen to me very attentively on this. Early in the morning, before any other business, you come to the Lord, what you are saying is that I am giving you the best of my time, the best of the day. 
you are you are my all and all. That's what you are saying. You are the person that should get the chiefest of uh, the day. First of all, I come unto thee to recognize that I cannot do without thee. That's what you are saying. That's why early in the morning, the devotion, and late in the night, the devotion. They will surely hear the dividend. Now, as somebody gathers members of his family, husband and wife, sibling to sibling, brother to brother, sister to sister. Now, they come together. Unlike uh, what we see in the present, the people go to the left and the other people go to the right. You know what we see in the present day. People are living together. Brother is living with brother. Uh, sister is living with sister. And then uh, families are living together. But you know what, uh, what we see? What we see is there is no communion, prayer, and, and devotion. No communion power. Don't you know that uh, when people gather together to do a thing, that the thing is more powerful than when an individual is doing the something? You should know that. Particularly in these last days, have I not said that God told me that we have but one minute to the midnight? Somebody will be saying, Are you serious? Yes, I am serious. That's what the Lord said. Now, in the evening, you come, even at the end of the day, and you are saying the day has ended. Oh Lord, thank you for all the all the things that uh, you have uh, done, all the things that we have prevented. And uh, you give him the the end of the day. Why will it not uh, yield you great dividend? Apart from that, do you know that uh, the night sessions are the real time of the activities of the devil? The real time of the activities of the devil. It's not that they are not acting in the day, but in the night season. When do occultic people do initiations? Is it not in the night? When do people dream those dreams that make them crazy when they wake up? Is it you not know, while they are sleeping? And uh, while they are sleeping, all these demons are roaming about and they are maneuvering. And they are doing terrible things unto the people. Now, before you get into the time of rest, and uh, when you are no more uh, conscious of this realm, you are cut off from this realm, but you are alive in the next realm, shouldn't you, first of all, even come before the Lord to take the protection that you should take. Look at what the psalmist said in chapter 3, Psalm 3, verse 5. I laid me down and slept. I awoke, for the Lord sustained me. Yeah? The Lord sustained you, please, endeavor to do this thing in the evening. You call upon the name of the Lord and Encircle yourself with the power of God, the aura of God, encircling you while you are on the bed sleeping. This practice will yield great dividends unto all that uh, are involved. Then you are now asking another question. Who may practice this routine? Who may practice this routine? Is it for everybody? Everybody in the world? Yes and no. Now, look at that place where we read part of Psalm 5. You see what he said concerning the wicked? Verse 4, For thou art not a God that hath pleasure in wickedness, neither shall evil dwell with thee. If everybody in the city, if everybody in the family, if everybody among the youth, if everybody that uh, is in the church is uh, keeping to right living, that person and those people like that, that are qualified to practice uh, this routine. But there are those that are not qualified to practice this routine, and we see who they are. Psalm 15, verse 1. Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle, who shall dwell in thy holy hill, he that walketh uprightly, and walketh righteousness, and speaketh the truth in his heart. He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor, in whose eyes a vile person is contemned. But he honoreth them that fear the Lord. He that sweareth to his own heart, and changeth not. 
He that put not out his money to usury, nor take it reward against the innocent. He that doeth this thing shall never be moved. This, this is a kind, these are the kinds of people that I will be able to practice this routine. I will reach unto God and yield them great dividends. There are very many people that are saying, pray for me. I want to be governor, pray for me. I want to be minister of this, pray for me. And uh, they are saying, all Nigerians, all Africans, all Americans, oh, pray for me. Pray for you. Everybody pray for you, including Satan. Including the demons, every person, including those that are serving Satan, they pray for you, including those that are, are full of talisman, including those that are mocking God, including those that, that are living in sin, day in, day out, and eating and drinking sin. And then you say, pray for me. There are those that, that say, let all, all the people in the country, let them fast and pray. Meaning what? Fast and pray? No, it's not like that. When Jonah was sent to Nineveh, what was he sent to do? He said, go and tell them, I give you a number of days and you are gone because of your sin, if you don't repent. And now how did God change his mind? He changed his mind because those people went into mourning, into fasting, and into praying, into repentance, including subjecting animals to the repentance. And then God had their prayer. So if you want to be part and parcel of this, now, you need to ensure that uh, your hands are clean. You need to ensure that you're a child of God. You need to ensure that you, you hate iniquity and, uh, and you love righteousness. You need to, need to take yourself away from everything that is seen. That is how somebody can be qualified, even to practice uh, this uh, routine. I've told you yes or no. Everybody can practice it. Yes, if everybody uh, goes to ensure that there are no, no problems, no sins, and no, no blood on your hands. Now, and uh, uh, no, if the person is found to have uh, this qualification, and that is uh, in Proverbs chapter 15. Proverbs chapter 15, and uh, we are reading verse 8. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. But the prayer of the upright is his delight. The sacrifice of the wicked, the prayer of the wicked, the singing of the wicked, the making music before the Lord of the wicked is an abomination. And who is the wicked? The wicked is somebody that uh, uses his mouth to destroy people. The wicked is somebody that is into adultery, into a fornication. The wicked is somebody that is into, into pride, into arrogance. The wicked is somebody that, that uh, hates his neighbor. The wicked is somebody that is uh, mischievous. The wicked is somebody that is taking the thing that belongs to every person for himself. The wicked is somebody that, uh, that does not allow justice to have its recourse. The wicked is somebody that shows no mercy. And then he says, God will not hear the prayer. Even the morning prayer and the evening prayer, the sacrifices of the person, God will not hear. Rather, it's an abomination. When something is an abomination, it means that it's an offensive something unto the Lord. And then in Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 27, the sacrifice of the wicked is abomination. How much more when he bringeth it with a wicked mind? Sacrifice of the wicked is abomination. So, we are learning to keep the rule, even the routine of the people of long ago, the people that went in the way we are going, and then they practiced it. And now you know what? It enriched the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to me attentively. That he continued ministering in the temple, and then when he finished, and I retired in the night sessions to the Mount of Olives, and talk to God, and, and talk to God, and sang praises unto God, to, and thank God, and reviewed everything, and then worship God, and made his request. Listen to me, as he was doing all that, God was responding. Yes, God responds unto the things that we do, whether you know it or not, 
There is a response. And the heart was filled with awareness and all that. And then he returns uh, the next day. And early in the morning, he goes to do that. And he is, uh, by doing that, he's continually being charged. Like the battery that has uh, uh, cells, uh, the cells are charged with electric current. And when the battery is alive, uh, you, you use it to start an engine and uh, uh, the press of the button, the engine starts. That's how, how it happened. And now, when it came out uh, from that nerve vigil and came out from daily routine of uh, coming before the Lord, things uh, begin to happen naturally. Awareness is there. You want to have a ministry that is dynamic, ministry that is ministry indeed. You want to be a child of God in the end and be helpful unto your neighbors that are incapacitated. Your neighbors that are being tormented and being pursued by Satan. If you want to be of help to them, this is the way you must go. And as you go this way, you are enriching your heart. And there is faith and there is assurance. There is an awareness. There is insight. And then you will be, you will be an instrument of uh, delivering and serving the people that are around you. And the Lord would want it to be like that. Because the days we're into are terrible days, and the Lord will want his children to be just like that. No more, no less. God will want his children to have uh, some substantial measure of uh, the fullness of Jesus Christ. And uh, if we want to have uh, some substantial measure of the fullness of Christ, we must have his practice, his routine. And uh, if you make up your mind this day to do this, if families make up their mind, if siblings make up their mind, listen to me. In these days of, uh, of uh, IT, you know that uh, a man or a woman can have an early morning devotion with uh, your son or with your daughter that is far away. You know, in the same city. Yes, we have uh, the mechanism of uh, IT. And then people are using it even to teach people from some distance, teach people in the university, teach people in the secondary schools. Why should we not use the mechanism? Even to reach out uh, to other people as we join together, even by those mechanisms, uh, to prepare our hearts and to minister to ourselves uh, and then get all the goodies uh, that we may be qualified to be able to march out. Uh, Force with force, fire with fire, and everything that is required in the present day. What thinking? So I enjoin you not to joke with this uh, uh, practice, this routine from this hour onwards. If you are fed in doing so, this is the time to repent. As we sing the song with uh, the music minister, the song is saying, Sweet hour of prayer. Another one is saying, tell it to Jesus. Another one is saying, telephone to heaven. And I pray that the Lord of Sabaoth will grant into our hearts what it takes to come to his house, into his presence, there in the early in the morning and in the night.
Oh, 
Oh, be 